Hi, hello, and welcome to Blades in the Dark, the oops all rogues of tabletop RPGs. But in all seriousness, that's, uh, actually one of its strong suits. A game where instead of an adventurer, you play as a scoundrel, and instead of a party, you're playing as a crew. The lowlifes, the thugs, the dealers, the con men, etc. All the grim, grime underworld. And of course, what's a great location and setting to play this literal rogues gallery? In Not Dunwall. And in the same way on what Dunwall is, the Not London. In particular, the industrializing London, the one that has all the terrible workhouses and all the terrible aristocracy and corruption. Mix in some fancy tech and some other fantasy elements, and boom, you've got a nice setting. But reading through this and hearing about that, that was the initial pitch I was given. That if you're wanting some kind of heist or all rogues party, it's Blades in the Dark you go for. But it's that read of just Dunwall, not Dunwall, doesn't work. I mean, it still does, carries many themes and, you know, base foundations in that industrializing London and England. It's the fact it has fantastical elements and is an even worse London than you first initially realize. Shattered Isles are awful. Magic existed beforehand, relatively fantastical, just humans, no other real fantasy races. And then the event occurred. Sometime about a thousand years ago, the gates of death broke. The sun shattered, night grows longer, everything's awful. Ghosts and demons come flooding from the afterlife, searching for any source of life, now maddened being stuck here, never allowed to rest. Entire nations are consumed in this place, entire civilizations and religions, histories, all wiped away in just mere months. And not just that knowledge base as well, but the actual life, not just human, plants, animals, just the land itself is dying. The sun is nothing but embers that remain in the sky now, dimly glowing at just dusk and dawn. So dark is the world that you still need lanterns and light sources in midday. And ever since the first year of this event, the moon has been growing larger and larger and larger within the night sky, this almost eerie cataclysmic inevitability. Occasionally, twins and duplicates of itself appear in the sky, constellations change change and shift, the waters long blackened into the void sea with a separate constellation underneath the dark waters, grand demonic possessed sea monsters taking over the ocean. It's awful, it's just really awful. But if that was the status quo for all of the history of this setting, we wouldn't really have one. And during this time came the figure of the Immortal Emperor, which you are living under his Imperium. So this Immortal Emperor with mysterious origins uses great sorceries, armies, and tactics to unify and protect the cities that swear fealty. Which in short order, lasts quite a while. Though over the centuries the sorceries begin to fail, the Deathlands grow harsher, and instead of relying on those ancient magics, the Imperium is forced to industrialize, finding a new source of power in a Electroplasm, or just plasm. Life essence distilled, namely from things congealing around ghosts, so you know, ectoplasm, congealed a bit further, but specifically its most powerful source, Leviathan blood. You know, those demon-possessed sea monsters out in the Void Sea. Replacing these sorceries are now these massive arcing lightning towers to keep out these spirits and hold off the bay and hold civilization. So to round that up a bit, outside of the city, the entire landscape's dead, the sun's gone, night lasts for almost ever, it's just awful, the ghosts and demons are everywhere, and all that manages to power and keep the city safe is hunting down demon-possessed sea monsters, turning their blood into power to power massive lightning towers to electrify and keep out those ghosts. Welcome to the Shattered Isles. Now, all of those topics have way more in-depth on them, but just... The city itself, and the life in the city of a city dweller. So on the London side of the things in the city, the stereotypes of that region go for, you know, Fallen London, sunless sea vibes, corrupt nobles, corrupt cops, corrupt priests, corrupt judges, a lot of corruption. Most of their wealth and influence either directly given from underneath the immortal emperor and those foundings, tied into some of the merchant alliances, or specifically, in Duskfall in particular, the Leviathan Hunterships. Massive whaler ships and constructs to be able to sent out to be able to take down those Leviathans in the first place. Huge investments. Owning the ships that bring in the Electroplasm, maintaining the status quo under the Immortal Emperor, they stay in power. And it's not just the fact that you're stuck under the boot of some of these nobles, when it comes to just eating things in the first place, food is a grand scarcity. Well, I shouldn't say that, I should also just say quality. No, it's scarcity as well. Plenty of starving. Both not much space to make things grow, and not much sunlight. Artificial lights of a kind are set up in some areas, but most things have been shifted to either fishing, because the oceans seem almost untouched. Not untouched, they're just warped. Mushroom farms, rats, oh goodness, the maze, the harrow maze. There's an entire device in the city that you can buy to fit in a small room in your house or a small box that has entire mice colonies or rat colonies that have specific sections of it to routinely lock, execute, 
and harvest the meat from. Put in feed in one end, you get raw mice meat out the other. Just a regular thing in the city, it's so fun. Mystery loafs, that's always good, made of the scraps. Algae farms built within the canals because they can't set up space outside of the city walls. A lot of it's really just scrounging for food from all the different dark places. You've got Leviathan blood for power, you've got these scraps in the dark for food. You got a functioning city and a population that keeps building house upon house and room upon room that just leaves this entire stack. But hopping a bit over into some of the more fantastical elements of it, because in this world of, you know, mundane survival to an extent, there's also still the weird spiritual stuff that's become the norm. Because after the apocalypse, you kinda just gotta deal with cults and demons. Because congrats, here you have no afterlife. Spirits do not dissolve as they were supposed to in the past. The whole thing of ectoplasm, leviathan blood in the first place is only a possibility since after the cataclysm. Everything leaves a bit of that residue that was alive, so these leviathans are for one, mice, plants, and also, a bit more importantly, people. However, when you die, it's not just some of this left over, people kind of leave a spirit. Well, it depends who you ask in Duskfall, it might be just an echo. Ignore it, it's a byproduct. But even the fields and lightning towers won't keep out those, those that die on the inside, that is. And for that, you have the spirit wardens, which have special bells within their crematorium that is burning 24 seven, which rings whenever anyone dies within the city. However, not everyone can hear it. All the spirit wardens can hear when these bells ring and all the people around the deceased. So just imagine you're just, you know, having a cup of coffee somewhere. Then you just hear ominous ringing of bells. Congrats, someone's died nearby. Better find that body before two to three days, cause after two to three days, that spirit's gonna book it. And now be a problem. Namely because every spirit goes mad. See, not being able to dissipate, they kinda just buy out their time and are attracted to things that remind them of the life they had before. Which sometimes is things that aren't that harmful, like echoes and essentially repeating things they did in life. Or the more commonly and worse ones, life. As in, I'm a spirit, you're someone who's alive, I'm going to take that now. No, it doesn't go well. So the spirit wardens come in, take the body, throw it into the crematorium, and hopefully burn away the soul alongside the electroplasmic furnaces. However, where the spirit wardens have missed it, you have whispers. People who have become attuned to the movings of the ether, and anything really magic, it's a general term for anyone messing with that. A medium, a diviner, a necromancer, a cultist, all whispers or someone faking it and ripping you off. However, alongside those spirits, it's not just ghosts and general specters that are your only worry. Cause you have things like devils, which is slang for a lot of different, just bad versions of all those previous things and things we're about to say, but demons also do just actually exist. They don't form because they're not made from anyone. They're things that had already existed and lived within the ether. They were never alive and they are nasty. Due to advancements in Sparkcraft, the working of this etheric and plasmic substance within technology, you have holes. Varying in sizes, these are autonoma that are powered and operated by blank slate powers and spirits. So we took a ghost or someone's soul, we wiped it clean, put it in a robot. Victorian-esque clockwork robot. Relatively rare, nobility might use them for private guards, you have things like the spirit wardens that use them quite regularly, but your common person isn't ever going to be able to afford nor make one. Speaking of souls occupying something, vampires! So while vampires are a thing, they're not all the blood-sucking type. And not in the sense like, oh there's different bloodlines, it's how they're formed. So you take a husk, we'll get to that, then you have a soul go onto the inside of it, entirely possess it and overtake it. So spirit has possessed someone of some kind, the original soul is long gone, the new spirit bounds with the physical body, killing its etheric presence and making it a solidly material being. And immortal. It does still need upkeep. Based off whatever the spirit was, the individual or the binding process, unique to almost all of them, they have different things they drain or take away. Sometimes this might just be happiness, not just blood. It might be an emotion, an activity. Take away someone's youth, just walking by them and draining them slowly. However, all of them do leave a mark of some kind, even the ones in passing. Though funny enough, while it is hunted now and extremely taboo and seen as a monster, Around the 6th century within the setting, there was a popular movement of vampirism, a move like a political cultural movement, and then it was just exterminated by the immortal emperor. Now they're the spooky monsters in the shadows again. Now that brief talk of a husk and this whole thing about manipulating spirits and the ether and stuff, oh don't worry, your soul can be killed while you're alive. Bringing you husks, people who have their soul killed and are kind of like inverted blanks. Blanks from 40k in that sense of people who have no soul, which, in that, it's projected and it makes everyone else around them feel uncomfortable and lifeless and just dampened in some sense. When you talk about a husk, it's inverted where it's all entirely on them. They're just kind of 
nothing really going on up in here. Really low willpower, easily affected by things, hence the ease of possessions on a husk. But after that systematic list of going some of the weird, like, fantasy-esque elements on it, on top of the regular, like, crappier London, it's the mix of them, it's all of it forced together, it's the fact that it's like, oh, it's all the spooky, gothic, Victorian, terrible themes all thrown together. Congrats, you have starving populaces, corrupt nobles, you have people who are like hoarding these different bits of food sources in a post-apocalyptic setting, massive whaler ships that head off to the distance to take the industrial leviathan blood, demon-possessed sea monsters on the void sea, that power of the lightning wall. <laughs> to keep out the endless hordes of ghosts. That whole sentence, that whole description. <laughs> and you play as a scoundrel living amongst all of this. The weird blend and fusion of fantasy, post-apocalypse, the end of everything, undead everywhere, and industrialization all mixed in this horrid, fantastic, fantastic place. Because who doesn't like Thief? Who doesn't like Dishonored? Who doesn't want to be that crazy scoundrel within the industrializing X not London. And on to those scoundrels, what you can play as. The Cutter! This is your bruiser, your fighter, I break kneecaps for a living. A living by taking yours. This is the muscle guy, you know, the one that's standing by the door, the bouncer, the I'm gonna break your kneecaps a bit later. The intimidation, the muscle. You wanna do anything melee or actually combat focused? The Cutter's your pick. The Hound! Now, we've got something akin to Bounty hunter, hitman, detective, as in PI, and gun. Namely because everything involves searching, tracking, getting information on someone, and ranged weapons where the cutter was melee. But also just like, look at that image. The tricorn hat, the rifle off to the side, that face. <laughs> I don't know what to describe it, but there, there's a look there. There's a look of being given. Hunting your quarry and the pistol blaster. Leech, make and break. So when it comes to leech, Interesting name. Thought they stole stuff originally, but really they mess with alchemy, spark craft. Both they're making things for you, but a lot of their abilities actually focus around breaking. I guess, you know, pays to know how something's made to break it. Sabotage things, break things. You can walk in where a cutter would have to beat it with a bat for multiple hours. You can walk in, hit the right space on the door, and it comes unlocked off the hinges, or you know, the machinery breaks in some sense or shocks someone. Booby trap an elevator so it still stays hooked up until someone tries to move the floor, then it falls five levels. Make poison, separate concoctions, adrenaline spines. Be a leech. Take, make, break. Lurk, this is your thief. This is your classic, I'm sneaking around, Catwoman-esque, jumping up, being stealthy, robbing people, taking things from other places, and then stowing them away efficiently. Not really for combat, because they're not about getting into combat in the first place. Best at stealth. Now the slide. So the slide would classically take the role of what you would call the face. But instead of nicely presenting for the party, which you can still do, or your crew in this sense, you're all about the lying. The manipulation, the tricking, the deceiving, the having a fake name, password, the con man. But also still, you know, being able to sell yourself a bit. Gotta be good at convincing to lie in the first place. Bonuses to putting on clothes, make yourself look upper class instead of the lower classes you begin with. False status, false name, make it, fake it till you make it. Or fake it until you keep faking it and take it. Ooh, the spider. So while the face is on a more personal level, the con man, the person telling you directly and lying to your face, the spider is the one behind the scenes. They're the one moving the politics, knowing where people are going to be, being able to hear where people are going to be next, being able to adapt who does what and in what order. The mastermind behind the scenes, stringing a web across the whole city, having things that can help your crew and be able to mess with other factions on the map. You have the spider, the background manipulation, and the whisper, the one on our thumbnail. As mentioned earlier with Whispers, the magic one. Because everything else fit kind of into a rogues gallery. Cutter and Hound a little off to the side, but still being able to fit into, you know, the thug, the muscle, the still some subtlety. The Whisper deals a lot more in the direct, magic, fantastical side of the setting. Whether you're a student in the academy studying some demonology, some random street urchin picked up by a cult, or someone who just stumbled and talked to a ghost when they were a kid. You've picked up some things and you can use them reliably. But this is not the end for our customization, no no. The crew has stats. Namely, you have different crew types, just like your scoundrel types. With their own perks, bonuses, and playbook, these are things that apply to the whole party overall, or your crew. You've got assassins for sneaking, stabbing, and high profile cases. The bravos for an entire group of thugs, Basically, protection racket. Mercenaries, Pinkertons, breaking up unions, that's even one of the missions in there. A cult, I think that one's kind of self-explanatory. Old gods, rituals, different demons, there's even a specific thing that helps with human sacrifice. Hawkers, vice dealers, the ones running a gambling den as a front to allow other things to go on in the back, and also, of course, rigging the tables. Or, you know, 
other vices. Shadows! You're a group of thieves, you're Thieves Guild. I'm here to steal things, I don't really care to kill anyone. I'm here to steal, go to the Dark Brotherhood for the assassin one. And lastly, smugglers, which are about the transport of things, moving them from city to districts, getting past the blue coats, the different police officers essentially, owning and controlling the flow of things. There are many, many more details when it comes to the world of the Shattered Isles and even just Duskfall alone, but that, saved for a different day. This is just the basic intro, you have your different scoundrels, your crews, and the general city and setting. And man, do I... Do I really have a specific thing for, wow, everything's bad settings? <laughs> Hope you liked the video, stick around for more talk on lore, discussions of these things, talks of games, and honestly, hanging out. It's a chill time here, hopefully. Before we go, a last thank you to my patrons, and to you, have a nice day.